Hi, this is Kevin from Mathsaurus, and in this video, we're going to be working through questions 11 to 15 of the Senior Math Challenge from 2020. I've put all of these questions and more in a free online course, Get Ready for the Senior Math Challenge. In that course, you can work through all of these questions, not just with the video solutions, but also with my video hints before each question to help you get into the question and to solve it yourself. So I think that's really the best way to prepare for the Senior Maths Challenge. I'll put a link in the description below. You can go over there and sign up. It's totally free and there's no ads or distractions like there are here on YouTube. So do go and sign up over there. Of course, if you'd rather watch the solutions right here on YouTube, you're very welcome to as well. And we will now get on with solving those problems. In question 11, we've got two congruent pentagons, each formed by removing a right angled isosceles triangle from a square of side length one. We fit them together and we end up with an octagon. And uh, so we want to work out uh, its perimeter. Now, um, some parts of the perimeter are easier than others. Obviously, I've got this one, these side lengths are one, 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 and one. So the two things I need to work out are what's this length here and then uh, this length here um, or also uh, now. So you could actually work those out directly or you could just look at these two together and say, oh, well, look, this plus this is just the same as this plus this. So those two together actually form uh, one unit. And similarly, um, if I uh, look at uh, this bit and this bit here, uh, that well again this one is the same as this length here so that's also one full unit so in total we've just got a uh, six and the answer here is six uh, just for completeness if you did want to work out those two parts individually uh, you could do um, all you'd have to do is is note you've got this uh, right angled isosceles uh, triangle here and that length is one so if I call these side lengths x by Pythagoras theorem we'd have uh, two x squared is equal to one, x squared plus x squared is one squared. So x would be one over the square root of two. So this side length here would be one minus one over root two um, because it's one minus that bit. And this one would be a one over root two. And again, when you add those together, you get one. And if you do that twice, also with this one and, and this one, again, they add together to get one. So you could work all the side lengths individually here, but there's no need to. Um, the first argument is nice and neat, saves us a bit of time, and lets us get on with the paper quickly. And the answer then is E6. A three-piece suit consists of a jacket, a pair of trousers, and a waistcoat. We've got two jackets and three pairs of trousers, cost £380. So let's write that as 2J plus 3T is equal to 380. We've also got that a pair of trousers cost the same as two waistcoats. So we know that T is equal to two times W, where J, T and W are obviously the price of each item individually. And it says, what's the cost of a three-piece suit? Now, more information needed is very rarely the right answer uh, in a maths challenge question. I'd forgive you for thinking it might be the right answer here because I've got Two pieces, of, two pieces of information and three unknowns. And usually you need three pieces of information for three unknowns. But we don't actually want to work out J, T and W here all individually. It's enough just to work out what J plus T plus W here is. And with these two pieces of information, we can actually work this out without working out what the values are individually. And the little trick here is that, well, if you look at this first equation, 2J plus 3T, I could write that as 2J plus 2T plus another t, that would be 380, but then the t is 2w, so I've got 2j plus 2t plus 2w, that's 380. And now, uh, if I divide this whole thing by 2, I get j plus t plus w is 380 divided by 2, which is 190. And so we can see that the answer to the question is b, 190 pounds. So the number 16 factorial divided by 2 to the k is an odd integer. Um, it reminds us here what factorial is, in case we haven't seen it before. Um, so 16 factorial, I'm actually going to write out in full here because it's going to be useful. Um, so it's 1 times 2 times 3 times 4, etc. Um, all the way up to 16. Now, uh, so if I'm going to divide this by 2 to a power, and I'm going to end up with an odd uh, number, all of the factors of 2 have to have disappeared. So like if I divided this number by 2, I could I would just get the same thing but without the 2 here. If I divide it by another 4, which is 2 squared, I'd get rid of that 4. And what's left uh, are just odd numbers here. And I multiply odd numbers together, I'll get an odd number. 
In the 6, there's also going to be a factor of 2. So if I divide by 2, that would give me this number. If I divide by the 8 here, which is 2 cubed, um, that will cancel out for the 10. That's got a factor of 2. That would leave a 5 in here. Uh, for the 12, that's got a factor of 4. Sorry, not 2 to the 4. 4, which is 2 squared. And that would leave me with a 3. And the 14 has a factor of 2, uh, which would leave a 7. And then if I divide by 16, which is 2 to the power of 4, uh, then everything that I've got left here will be an odd uh, number. Now, if I divide by any more 2s, I'm dividing an odd number by 2, and it won't be an integer anymore. So this is exactly the number of 2s that I need to divide by to divide by to get an odd integer. So how many are there in total? 1 here, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Um, and the answer here is D, 15. In question 14, Diane's got five identical blue disks, two identical red disks, and one yellow disk. And she's going to place them in this grid, and I've just made a bigger copy of this down here, um, so that there's one of these disks in each um, in each cell. The two red disks can't be placed so that they have a in cells that have a common edge. So uh, now I think the key to this question, I mean there are other ways of doing it as well, but I think because there's this sort of restriction on the red disks, it makes sense to start by thinking about where the red disks go. I think at least that's how I thought about it. So let's say I put a red disk here. How many other places could I put this other red disk? Well, I can't put it here or here, but I could put it here, 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 or here. So there would be five uh, possible um, ways of having a red disk in this corner. Now, what I do next is I think, okay, well, what if the red disk was, was the first red disk was here? How many places are there that I can put this next one? Well, again, I'm not going to consider. Well, now, obviously, I can't actually put it here because they'd be next to each other. But as I go through, I'm not going to consider any that involve this. Uh, square or any others that I've already considered, right? So um, you'll see what I mean in a second. Uh, so with this one, I could put it either here, 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 or here, but not in not in the ones here or here. Um, so there's four that would have uh, a red disc there. Now, um, so like when I consider this next one, right? I'm going to count them, but I'm obviously not going to count this one because I've already counted it uh, as, as part of that five. So where else could I put it? Well, one. Um, two or three uh, positions uh, left for that one. And then um, if I put it here, there would also be three, one, two, or three uh, here and here, 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 and here, sorry. And uh, now if I put it here, again, I'm not considering any of the ones that I've already done before. I can't go here, but it could go here or here. So there would be two. Um, and uh, if I put it here, there's only one left here because I can't put it next to it. Um, and then there's no way that uses these two uh, without using one of the other ones, because I'd have to put them here and here, but they'd be next to each other, so there's no more. So there'd be 5, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 ways of positioning the red disks. Now just think what happens when you've got the two red disks somewhere, right? Let's say they're here and here. Um, and, and what I've got left to do is to put in uh, f five blue disks and one and one yellow disk, okay? so. You know, I might put in uh, blue, 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 and then we'll put a yellow one in uh, the last spot here. Because there's only one yellow disc, well, how many ways are there to do this? Well, I could just put the yellow one in any of these six remaining uh, spaces, and uh, then the blues will just fill up the rest. So, there's, so for any particular combination, there's six ways of putting the yellows and the blues. So I'd need to do 18 uh, times 6, that's uh, 60 plus 48. Uh, which is 108, and in total, then there are 108 uh, different looking completed grids that it's possible to produce. So we've got this picture and it says, the shaded area in the diagram is the interior of a circle of radius three with this area between the circle and the two tangents to the circle. Um, so, uh, and the angle here is 60 degrees, and we want to work out the total shaded area. So the thing we should know about tangents is that they meet the radius to the circle at right angles here, and that's going to be a really key to this question. I might not draw it perfectly accurately here, um, but it'll be close enough for a diagram. And um, if I also draw, I think, a line down the middle here, that makes sense. So I've got these two congruent triangles, and so rather than actually taking the circle and then trying to add on uh, this part here, actually what we'll do is we'll take um, a sector of the circle here, right? Um, if this is 60, then each of these is 30, so these are also 60, so it's 120 here, so this side is 240, right? So this bit is going to be two thirds of the circle, two thirds times pi r squared, 
um, which is 2 thirds times 9 pi here, which is 6 pi, and then we'll add on these uh, two triangles. So they're right angle triangles, so I can just do uh, half base times height for them. The base is the radius of the circle, which is 3, and you could work out the height here um, using Socato if you wanted to, if you know sine, cos, and tan, or whatever, for, you know, it actually can be quite useful to know sine, cos, and tan of 30, 60, and 45 uh, for the senior maths challenge, even for the intermediate maths challenge, you can make use of it. But I don't like to use those if I don't have to. So another way of doing this would be to just paste these two uh, triangles together here and say, okay, what I want is the area uh, of this triangle. That would be the same as these two bits put together, this whole, this, um, this whole uh, equilateral triangle here and it is an equilateral triangle right because it's 60 at the bottom here it would be 60 it would be 60 at the top here and so it would be 60 here as well so if it's an equilateral uh, triangle and we can see that the base here is 3 um, and this is exactly half of the base that length would be 6 and so this length up here would be 6 as well and so actually looking at this um, uh, looking at this triangle in here right we can uh, we can say ah I've got uh, a right angled triangle here and uh, the length here is 3 and this is 6, so if this is x I've got 3 squared plus x squared is 6 squared, so x squared is 36 minus 9 which is 27, so x is the square root of 27, we should be good enough at thirds for the senior maths challenge to write this as the square root of 9 times the square root of 3, which is um, 3 root 3, so ah, I've got that this uh, height here then is 3 root 3, this base along here is 3, or the whole thing is 6, so the area of this uh, triangle is a half times the base uh, of 6 times the height of 3 root 3, that's doing the two triangles together, um, so that's uh, 9 uh, root 3, so to get the total area I'm just going to add this 9 root 3 to 6 pi, and we get 6 pi plus 9 root 3, and the answer is A. Um, the argument I've made here about the equilateral triangle, by the way, is exactly how you would prove what the values of sine, uh, cos and tan of, uh, uh, of um, 30 and 60 degrees are. Start with an equilateral triangle, say you know what the side lengths are, and then deduce what sine, cos and tan of, uh, of 60 degrees are, uh, and, and 30 degrees are. So actually, in a lot of the mass challenge questions where it looks like you're meant to use, like just remembering those things, you can often find ways of uh, of doing it more directly like this, um, but of course uh, it can be uh, handy to have all the tools at your disposal, so just memorising uh, those values, just as I say, just for 30, 60 and 45 I think could be uh, quite useful if you want to, or at least remembering how you prove them from an equilateral triangle and the other one you prove for 45 from uh, a right angle isosceles uh, triangle um, uh, like this. Um, and you know from that triangle you can deduce sine cos and tan of, uh, of, uh, of, of 45 degrees. Really hope you found that useful. Don't forget that all of these questions and more are included in the free online course Get Ready for the Senior Maths Challenge where you can work through all of these problems and more with the video solutions and also my video hints. You can select the answers, it'll tell you which ones you've got right or wrong and you can work through the whole paper like that. I really think it's the best way to prepare for the Senior Maths Challenge. Anyway, really hope you found this useful. Please do like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It really helps me uh, get this content out there and helps get this into the uh, feeds of as many people who might find it useful as possible. Anyway, that's all for now. I'll see you in the next video.